So here is the quickest start guide on how to get into cosplay. Number one, pick a character. And number two, dress like that character. And that's it. That's how you get into cosplay. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I hope you have a fantastic day. Nah, I'm just playing with y'all. It's, it's a little bit more than that, but generally cosplay just breaks into costume play. You're wearing a costume and you're pretending to be someone else. A lot of people see cosplay online, whether it be from Instagram, here on YouTube, or TikTok, and they think, well, I like to create, and I like anime characters or video game characters. Why can't I cosplay? How do I, how do, I do this? Well, don't fret, I have a quick start guide to getting into cosplay. And as you can tell by the length of this video, it's not a comprehensive guide. It is just a starting point to where you, listener, viewer, you, can find out where you can start best with cosplay. So first off, cosplay is for everyone. You don't need to be a certain gender orientation, age, build, race, whatever. You don't need to be a certain thing to cosplay. People will often say that they can't cosplay because they are of a certain age or a certain race or a certain demographic. But in general, cosplay is for everyone. And if someone tells you different, you just hit the block button. But let's go ahead and get into the guide. I'm sure you're wondering what I have planned in store for you. When it comes to cosplay, of course the big question is whether you want to buy or make. Let me be clear, both are very valid forms of cosplay. However, if you're interested in joining the cosplay competitions, making is the route you want to go. And if you want to focus more on having fun at cons or making fun little videos, buying it might be the way for you. Here's a little tip about how I choose whether to buy or make a costume. Number one, how popular is the character? Typically, more popular franchises such as Genshin Impact or Honkai Star Rail will have more costumes and characters available in the pre-made or pre-bought category. However, if you want to cosplay something that's a little bit more niche, then it's best to figure out how to make it yourself. Two, what are the costs? Is it more or less expensive to make it myself or than to buy it? I'm going to use Genshin Impact again because that's what I'm really working on right now, but I would say it is maybe a little bit more cost effective to buy a Genshin Impact cosplay because of how many moving parts and asymmetrical weirdness that all of the designs are. However, if it's a more simple character like Marcel from the new Dungeon Meshi anime, watch it by the way, then it might be more cost effective to make it yourself. Now that we've weighed the pros and the cons of buying versus making, let's go ahead and pick a character that we want to cosplay. So you want to get into cosplay. Well, let's figure out the most important part, which is picking your character. First, let's take into account your current skills. Are you a complete noob when it comes to any sort of sewing or foam? Or do you perhaps have previous skills from your other hobbies or jobs, such as 3D modeling or painting? Let's take those into account when picking a character. For example, if you've only sewn a pillowcase, perhaps you shouldn't do Eula from Genshin Impact. Or let's say you have very little knowledge on how to make EVO foam armors or shapes. Perhaps it's not best to choose a Baldur's Gate 3 armor piece then. And I'm not here to say you can't or you never will do these. I am just saying, let's pick something that's more aligned with your current skills. That way you're more likely to actually complete your cosplay and that will really help with learning skills as well as improving your confidence with cosplay. Let's just say I decided to overscope a couple cosplays myself and ended up being severely burnt out from the entire hobby. Here are a couple great starting characters for you to choose from. Studio Ghibli has a wide variety of amazing characters to choose from that all have pretty straightforward and simple designs, but you can make them more complex if you need to. Retro video games like The Legend of Zelda have amazing outfits to choose from that are both simple and straightforward, yet iconic. One of the most popular animes of all time, Dragon Ball Z and all the other Dragon Balls have amazing costumes to choose from, however the wigs may get a little complicated. Finally, Avatar The Last Airbender has amazing character designs and, well, characters that have great costumes to choose from that are straightforward, simple, and can be made as complex as you want. Do you have your character in mind? Great. Let's figure out how to actually do this thing. So it's often said that cosplay is 500 hobbies in a trench coat, and here is just a couple of uh, skills that some cosplays or some cosplayers know. 
As you can see, that is a very daunting list, and I don't expect every cosplayer to know how to do everything on this list perfectly, or well at all. To help narrow down this list, let's focus on the three major parts of cosplay. Sewing, foam, and wigs. To start, let's pick a skill that closely aligns with what character you want to do. So for example, let's say you picked Marcel from Dungeon Meshi. This is an outfit that has a lot of sewing and very little EVA foam work and wig work. So if you wanted to pick something similar to Marcel, I would recommend buffing up your sewing. Let's say you wanted to cosplay Sylvanas from World of Warcraft. She is majority foam work or armor pieces, so you'll really have to buff up that EVA foam skill. And let's say you wanted to cosplay Junko from Danganronpa. She is mainly known for having her giant hair, so wig work is going to be your major category. But of course, sewing is there too. As you might have seen from this list, although they have different priorities of what they want to focus on, they all have some aspect of sewing. So please, if you want to build any skill for cosplay, learn how to sew and learn how to make patterns and learn how pieces fit together. Sewing is a skill that's been around since, well, humanity started wearing clothes around. So it's a lot to learn, but there's great tutorials online, such as Sewing Basics by The Essentials Club, Understanding Sewing Patterns by Vintage Thirsty, Corsets Over Explained by Sarah Spaceman, and A Beginner's Guide to Learning to Sew by Jenny D. And that's not all the sewing tutorials that exist ever. Of course, the internet is huge. So if you find something a bit more specific for your cosplay, start looking into those videos as well. EVA foam, on the other hand, hasn't been around as long. Like, probably what, 30 years max? So it's a lot easier to find tutorials on how to do this as well as learn the skill faster. Here are a couple EVA foam tutorials that I really enjoy. 10 Tips and Tricks for EVA Foam by Kenpatsu Cosplay. How to Cosplay Armor by Cheesecake Panda Cosplay. 7 Techniques to Texture EVA Foam by Hendo Art. And SKS Props General How to Armor with EVA Foam. And a little disclaimer, just because tutorials sometimes don't put this in, but they should. EVA Foam is mostly glued with contact cement, which is dangerous to humans, pets, and children. So when working with cosplay, especially EVA foam and contact cements or any adhesives really, or paints, make sure that you're doing it in a safe environment. That means away from pets, children, in a well-ventilated area with the respirator, with glasses, and with gloves if need be. And lastly, wigs elude me. To me, wigs are a sort of witchcraft. But you can learn a lot online, especially from drag kings and drag queens, about making larger-than-life, super-styled wigs. But here are some more cosplay-specific wig tutorials. Mastering Extreme Wig Styling by Cowbuck Crunchies Cosplay. Five Tips for Wig Styling by Lichi. Wig Basics for Cosplay by Sarah Saisman. Wig Styling Basics by Anya Panda. All right, so now that you've got your character picked and your skills that you need to learn, Go, be free, do cosplay. Yeah, yeah. I really can't help you with the next step because the next step is starting and well, finishing. All I can offer you is advice. Take learning slow, especially with new skills and don't get frustrated when something doesn't work out. When I first got into sewing, I think I made the same pair of pants seven times. <laughs> but by the eighth, I had finally gotten the skills down and now I'm confident to make pants for more characters. Also, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are the best way to learn any kind of skill. And with cosplay, there's a lot of skills involved, so you'll be making a lot of mistakes. Learning how to roll with your mistakes and learn from them is probably the greatest skill to have in cosplay. Become a sponge to this cosplay knowledge. There are plenty online that love to teach people how to make certain things or how to do generalist things like sewing a dress or pants. Just take that knowledge in and apply it. And maybe at one point, you can maybe give some of your own knowledge back. So that's it for this video today, and I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, my Patreon this month has my Noel patterns and tutorial on it. I am living with that cosplay. I'm living, I'm suffering to help. <laughs> 
but she will be my Patreon reward for January. So if you want to check that out, give some support to the channel as well as help me finish this build, that would be fantastic. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I will catch you next week with a very fun video. I say that at the end of every video. They're all fun, okay? Just watch them, I promise. <laughs> See ya. As always, thank you so much to my patrons, especially my tree tier patrons, Bulls and Jay. Thank y'all.